What is going on everybody and welcome to part 22 of the Golang tutorial series. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is channels. So the idea of channels with Go is to use them with your Go routines in order to send and receive values between them using the channel operator. And the channel operator is just your less than sign and then a minus sign basically. It looks like an arrow. So let's go ahead and just start with a really, I don't know what I was about to type, but anyway, package main, uh, we'll import format. We'll also spell import, right? Import format. And then we'll have func main. And, um, and what we'll do first is we should, let's make a channel. So generally to make a channel, you're gonna have make, and then you'll have the the channel so we're going to make a chan and then you give the <clears throat> the type of the channel so in this case it's going to be type int so we can assign this and give this a you know to a va uh, variable by doing foval so foval is a, a a channel of the int type now of course um just like a lot of things in Go, if you wanted that channel, it could contain a type that you created with a struct. So if you wanted to pass, be able to pass, you know, every time an integer, a string, and then a float or something like that, you could create a custom type and pass that instead. So anyways, our channel will be foval. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to create a func foo. And basically what we're going to do with foo is let's just say we're going to take a value. So we're going to take, you know, some value and then we want to multiply it by five. So this foo function needs to at least accept in some value and that'll be of the int type. Now, if we want to send and receive this over channels, we also need to pass the channel. So we're going to pass C for channel. So it's a chan and int. So C chan int. So then some value times five. Now, if we want to pass that to the channel, send that over this channel, we can say C for the channel and then use the channel operator to send that over to the channel. So basically what we're doing is we're sending to the channel some value times five. Because we're sending it over the channel, we actually don't need to return anything in this function. We just send it over the channel. So, <clears throat> Uh, we'll come down here now and we'll just say go foo. Uh, the channel is foo_val, and the value, let's say, is five. <clears throat> and then let's go ahead and do that again. So let's do three. <clears throat> so now what we'll do is we can receive those values the same way using the channel operator. The channel operator, like the arrow, doesn't ever point the other way. So, so the way that we can do that is, you know, like we can load a value or send a value to the channel, or we can get a value from the channel doing the same thing. So we could say v1 colon equals whatever the receiving value from foo_val is. Now this will just be the first value from foo_val because we know we have two values. We could hard code it and say v2 is also whatever the, the second foo val is basically. Um, oh, let's, let's go ahead and print this out too. So now let's do format.println v1 v2. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll do go run go tut.go. And sure enough, we get 15 and 25. <clears throat> so, um, so that's just like a really basic example of using channels. Um, but obviously it gets a little more complex than that. Again, just kind of like simple Go routines. We begin to have questions of how do we do synchronization? How do we do things like, for example, we didn't even actually synchronize these. Um, but then there's also the concept of buffering with channels um, and, and things like that. And then also just iterating over channels. Like in our case, we could know how many sitemaps we're going to be working with. So we could, in theory, know how many values we're going to return. But obviously, this is pretty sloppy. Um, the other thing you could do is you could say v1 v2 colon equals and then the return like this. Uh, I think that I'm trying to think. I, I'm not sure you might do it that way. I think it's that way, actually. 
And let me comment these out real quick. Let's see. No. Maybe it's with a comma. There is a way to do it that way. Either way, though. Yeah, okay, that worked. So, but either way, this would be hard coded. Like, let's say you had, in our case, like, yeah, I think we have like 15 sitemaps or something. But what if you had like 100? Should you, as the programmer, write all these out? No. You're going to want to iterate over the channels. And when you iterate over them, that's when, when the synchronization becomes an issue. Because actually, right now, you might have already noticed, hey, we're using Go routines and we didn't have to wait for them, right? Um, that's because. Uh, by default, a channel, the it, the send and receive part of the channel is going to be blocking. So as long as you're, hey, you're saying, hey, I want to receive those values, it's going to block for you. But again, just like I've been saying in this entire series, um, basic examples are really easy. It's when you actually go to use them in practice that you're like, wait, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> right? So anyways, uh, that's what we're going to learn about in the next tutorial is, is how we can actually more practically use channels. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.